So let's talk about functions. Simply put, a function is a mapping from one set to another set. So for example, maybe I've got a set of letters and I'm gonna map that to this other set of numbers. We call the set that we're mapping from the domain and the map that we're setting to the codomain. So in this example, our domain is the set of letters from A through L and our codomain is the set of numbers from one to six. We call it a function when everything from the domain maps to exactly one thing in the codomain. So that means that in order for this to be a function to map eggs to uh, the holes in the egg carton, we need to make sure that every single egg gets a spot in the carton, and we also need to make sure that no egg is occupying two spots in the carton. So now we know that this is a function because every egg has a spot in the carton and no egg is occupying two spots in the carton. We often think about functions as taking something from the domain as input and producing something from the codomain as output. So in this instance, the function that was mapping letters to numbers, uh, if we gave the a as input to that function, then the output was going to be one because a maps to one. So oftentimes if the function is called f, we'll say that f of a equals one, or uh, b happens to map to two and d happens to map to six. So f of b equals two and f of d is equal to six. So let's say that there were some eggs that did not have any space in the carton. So that, that means that there were elements of the domain that didn't map to anything in the codomain. If that's the case, then we will call that a partial function. So partial functions are functions where not everything in the domain uh, has an output in the codomain or maps to something from the codomain. Um, oftentimes when everything does, everything in the domain does map to something in the codomain, you'll call that a total function, but typically, um, unless the context suggests otherwise, when you just say function, you generally mean total function. So this is an example of something that we call an onto function. So an on, a function is onto when everything in the codomain receives at least one thing from the domain. That is, for everything in the codomain, there exists something from the domain which maps to it. So it doesn't need to be exactly one thing, it just needs to be at least one thing. So in this case, our domain had 12 elements in it, our codomain had six elements in it, and every all six of the elements of our codomain has at least one letter mapping to it. So in this case, for, for example, we have A and G both map to one. So if we can always, for every element in our codomain, find something from our domain mapping to it, then that means that the function is onto. So another property a function might have is something that we call one-to-one. -one. So a function is one-to-one -one if different things from the domain map to different things from the codomain. So you can see for our mapping here, when we had two different letters as input to our function, they were going to, every single time, map to, map to two different numbers. That is, there are no outputs that have two inputs mapping to it. You can also see that this example is an onto function. You can tell that because every single number has some letter that's mapping to it. So in this case, this is actually something that we call a bijection because it is both one-to-one -one as well as onto. If the domain of a function is a finite set, then we'll often call that a finite function. However, if the domain of the function is an infinite set, we'll call that an infinite function. Now, I only have finitely many eggs in my kitchen, so let's go to the office to talk about infinite functions. So before we move on, this is a summary of all of the function properties that we've seen so far. So in this case, we have a function f that maps the domain d to the codomain c. So go ahead and look, take a look at each of these formal definitions, and then we'll show you some example functions, and you try to figure out what properties those have. 
So an infinite function is a function where the domain is an infinite set. The codomain actually doesn't matter for whether or not this is an infinite function. So here we have several examples for an infinite function that maps integers to integers. So for each of these examples, I mentioned the properties that it has, whether it's one-to-one -one or onto or a partial function. So make sure that you understand why each of these functions has the properties that are outlined on this slide. Now one of the most interesting ways to use functions is that you can actually use functions to compare the cardinalities of different sets. So if I look at a one-to-one -one function, a one-to-one -one or injective function says that uh, nothing in the codomain can receive two things. That is, different things in the domain need to map to different things in the codomain. So in order for that to be possible, it has to be the case that there are at least as many things in the codomain as there were in the domain. So consider alternatively that the domain was larger than the codomain. If that was a total function, then we'd have no choice to than to map two things or duplicate things from the domain to the same thing in the codomain. So if you recall, this is something called the pigeonhole principle, that if I have uh, a large number of, of things in my domain and a smaller number of things in my codomain and everything in the domain maps to something in the codomain, two things must at some point map to the same thing. Similarly, with onto or surjective functions, um, if we can find a surjective function from a domain to, the, to a codomain, then that must mean that the domain is at least as large as the codomain. Because to be surjective, we need to make sure that some element from the domain maps to each element in the codomain. And then since this is a function, we can't have one element mapping to two different elements in order to have enough things to just cover the entire codomain there had to be a, there had to have been at least as many things in the domain and now if we take the both of those together so we have a bijection between the domain and the codomain we're actually able to conclude that the two sets have exactly the same size so we know that because that, that mapping was an onto function, it must have been that the domain was at least as large as the codomain, since it was one to one. We knew the codomain must have been at least as large as the domain, and if both of those are true, it must have been that the two sets were of exactly equal size. Now, this is easy enough to see if you go back and look at the egg example. Um, so when you have finite sets, this is probably pretty intuitive. Things get strange, though, when you start talking about infinite sets. So it's unclear exactly what it might mean for two infinite sets to be of the same size or of different sizes. So people typically use this bijective definition, or this bijective observation from finite sets, and generalize that to infinite sets. So we say that two infinite sets are going to have the same cardinality if there is a bijection between them. And if somehow you could demonstrate that there is not a bijection between those two infinite sets, then they're not actually going to be the same size. And we're going to be talking about, about that a little bit more later. 